going to go over a few things. I'm going to give you an overview of who is OSI Soft and what is the product we make called the Pi system. Um, and I'll try to use it in, in the context of this conference and how the Pi system can be used to reduce chances of catastrophes and disasters. And uh, if the worst happens and there's something that has to be monitored, how to use Pi for situational awareness while that catastrophe is going on. So OSI Soft is a company that's been around for about 35 years. We make one product called the Pi System. Um, we refer to the Pi System as a data re uh, application ready data infrastructure. So we collect data to begin with from about 450 sources of data like automation control systems, sensors, and remote mobile assets. And one of those assets might be an HF tablet, for example. Um, so the system's installed at about 19,000 sites in 125 plus countries. And in aggregate, our customers have about 1.5 billion streams of real-time data, pressure, temperatures, flows, pH, uh, any, anything that's generated from a sensor and as a real-time stream of data. Um, we do user conferences, and we've collected about 1,600 case studies of our customers applying this technology in a lot of different industrial situations. Um, our headquarters is in San Leandro, California, and just coincidentally, it was on the map by the presenter, a couple presenters uh, ago, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, we have offices around the world uh, that have development, sales, uh, field service, and tech support. And what that means is that wherever the sun is shining, you've got someone who's going to answer a tech support call, who is working tech support that day, but another day they might be doing uh, training or field service. So we've got a really excellent um, tech support experience by people who actually install software customers. So the components of the Pi system, as I mentioned, you know, we connect a lot of different types of assets with those 450, a library of 450 plus um, interfaces and connectors to these data sources. Um, that's our traditional means, but more recently, we're getting data directly from sensors, from IoT gateways, and devices like the HX tablet that may have uh, location on them. It could have uh, gas sensors, temperature, uh, shock, maybe that indicates the, the device has been dropped, which you might infer something about the uh, status of the individual who's carrying it. Um, so we can collect quite a bit of data from an Ajax tablet and include that in the context of the environment that they're in, whether that's a chemical plant or a pulp and paper mill or electrical power utility. So the data goes into our Pi Data Archive which is optimized for this time series data, which is quite different than relational and transactional data. Uh, we've got a relational layer on top of that, we call the asset framework, that allows you to build a hierarchy of your enterprise. So you've got an enterprise, you've got divisions, you've got sites, within those sites you've got process areas, equipment, down to individual sensors. So you can uh, find the information you're looking for through a browse or a search quite easily. And then after that, we apply, we call it asset analytics. You know, I, I prefer to call it calculations. We apply calculations to these assets in real time. And then those calculations can generate um, event frames, which might be something like an environmental excursion. So uh, we detect that we're putting gas out into the atmosphere. Um, so let's frame that. What's the start of the event? What's the end of the event? Uh, who's the operator? What's the material being vented? Where is it happening? Uh, at what rate? How much happened over the course of the event? We can capture a lot of information on an individual event. And then if you've got many events, hopefully you don't have many environmental excursions, but something like a downtime, you know, we can analyze those types of events in things like uh, Azure or any analysis package that we would want to send the data to. And we can send notifications to people when this happens via instant message or uh, emails or connected to other systems through, um, through files or, uh, or uh, files or, or web services.
this calls to other tools. We have native visualization tools, and we have what we call integrators to send the data from our PI system to other systems. And I think one that would be very interesting in the context of this conference is ESRI ArcGIS to get a geospatial perspective on that real-time data from plants. So here's an example. Um, if you've got real-time data, this is an example of oil wells. So it's telling the status of your oil well. Is your, is your well pumping well? Is it pumping poorly? But that could just as well be a vehicle. What's its location? Uh, what services are available with that vehicle? Who's the personnel? Um, and so you've got geospatial and real-time data in the same environment. Uh, another aspect of the system that's important to this kind of crowd is its resilience and um, fault tolerance. So we've got redundant data capture capabilities. Uh, we've got redundant servers that store the data. We've got redundant data paths to those servers. Uh, data is buffered locally if any of these paths are interrupted. So in the end, you get identical data through all servers in the system and through uh, a collective manager, the users are always connected to the data uh, unless, you know, unless all communication paths fail, in which case we've got a real big problem. Um, this is useful for you know, being connected all the time, but also that data is very valuable. So these servers can be geographically dispersed. You could have one here, you could have one in Atlanta, you could have one on the west coast or across the ocean. Um, so that reduces the risk of that system becoming completely unavailable and also makes it much easier to restore the systems um, after, after an incident. So the types of companies that we usually serve, uh, our, our biggest sector is electrical and water utilities. That goes from power generation, transmission, distribution, and even down to uh, metering at, at the customer interface. Um, oil and gas, similar story. Not so much in exploration, but in drilling, in well production, in pipelines, and in refineries. Uh, the, the system is used throughout, and it gives an integrated view of the whole value chain. Uh, pulp and paper, we've got a very large footprint. Metals and mining. Uh, chemicals and petrochemicals and um, life sciences have been our core six. We're moving more into the discrete world, uh, so automotive, aerospace, uh, consumer packaged goods, that type of thing. And we find a lot of uh, applications in the test. After somebody builds a piece of equipment, they want to test it, we've got use of it there. What's common to all of those industries is the horizontal the transportation. You've got ships. You've got rail, you've got off-road vehicles, like mining vehicles. We're not too, too much in the standard highway trucking or, or um, <coughs> consumer vehicles, but you know, the more expensive assets are, are starting to be monitored extensively. And then building facilities. The way our customers use the data, um, originally it was for process optimization. So let's increase the throughput of my uh, paper production. Um, but asset health is a, a big second. So um, condition-based maintenance, predictive maintenance. Um, you know, when is this asset going to fail? And what should I do about it to avoid that failure, or at least schedule downtime to avoid uh, unplanned outages? Um, energy optimization, whether that's uh, electricity, natural gas, steam, water, uh, all, all resources that go into processes can be optimized with the help of data. Uh, quality of products, uh, FDA and EPA compliance for regulation, and uh, environmental health and safety. You know, some of the examples, like with uh, an Ajax tablet, giving location and what's the ambient condition could be an important aspect of environmental health and safety. So how would you use data to avoid a catastrophe? I've got a couple case studies that have come from customers and partners. So the first one's by Chevron. The second one is using FlowServe, which delivers uh, pumps and 
material handling equipment, handling equipment to a lot of heavy carpet industries. So this was from a user conference presentation. The link to the full presentation is there. But um, quickly, it's just talking about <laughs> a, um, a FPSL floating production and oil storage. It's basically a giant boat uh, that operates in an oil field off the coast of Brazil. That's an example of one. Floating production, storage, and offloading facility. So that's the kind of equipment we're talking about. It's like an oil rig, but it's mobile. Um, I'm only showing you a small part of this presentation focused on events and notifications, how this can be used to uh, stay ahead of catastrophes and shareable dashboards. Uh, so in the, in the event of you need some situational awareness, you've got the data there. So in the events and notifications, there is a challenge of uh, notifying employees and creating calculations. Uh, the solution was they used several high system components, and the result was an increase in surveillance, uh, chemical storage monitoring, we'll see an example of that, and uh, people seeing the availability of this data uh, generated interest in them using it in many other ways. So this is a simple base dashboard that can be shared with uh, just sending a, a link by email to another user within the same corporation. They've got access to the server, and they can see dynamically in real time tank levels, how the chemicals being used, uh, what's the cost. There's an error uh, that's calculated here, and we're calculating the estimated cost of that error. Um, just very simple sharing of dashboards, sharing of information between people uh, so that people can take action on something. But it's mobile, and it's as simple as <coughs> copying a, a URL and emailing it. Somebody. Um, yeah, so with the shareable dashboards, you see the users easy to create, to share their dashboards, and permit a centralized management. Once again, high system components, but it said one of the results was new platform, platforms can be used to monitor the desired variables. For example, mobile phones or tablets. Great content to put on some Ajax hardware. Uh, so overall, some of the results uh, they got out of capturing this data, generating notifications, sharing the information, were the variable thresholds being fully integratable and notifiable, uh, new and shareable standardized dashboards, and quicker data transfer between servers. Very condensed version of that um, user presentation, but. Hopefully, it gets some of the points across. Um, oh, I've got a hyperlink here that I have to click. We're going to watch a two, two and a half minute video about predictive analytics and augmented reality and how that can help to notify people when there will be a problem and help them to see what's going on when they're out in the field. So, that, that link, for some reason, is invisible, but I know where it is. Seems to be right about there. Would you look at the efficiency of the process plant or industrial facility? The asset total cost of ownership has everything to do with the opportunity cost of ownership. Unplanned downtime, coupled with poor maintenance practices, cost the global process industry 5% of their annual production. That's equivalent to 20 billion US dollars. 80% of those losses are operations and asset owners together with some industrial service providers or equipment manufacturers so that they can reduce downtime and we showed a, uh, a demonstrate of a, a realistic pump scenario in these industrial environments. It's the flow strip pump. Uh, we have the National Instruments uh, Test and Measurement Platform. Uh, we use the Pi system for the operational unit. And we also use components of the PTC platform, which were the advanced analytics for the anomaly detection uh, and also for the augmented reality. I've been typing down this valve. 
you'll see the bubbles start to appear in the inlet line. And it's predicting that in about five days, we're going to have an appellate failure in this pump. When I pull this lever, it's going to cause a shaft misalignment. So the motor will no longer be in perfect alignment with the pump. And we can see that we're going to have a bearing failure in two days. What we've shown is that the pump is able to distinguish between two different types of failures. And uh, actually, the pump's pretty smart, and it sent me an email saying that, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's telling me that it's going to have an impeller failure here in a couple of days. Before, right, you would have to look at a dashboard, and you would look at the piece of equipment, and you'd kind of, in your mind, meld the two together. But by bringing them together in an alternate reality, you don't have to go on we're able to uh, actually augment real-time data on top of the pump. A technician who had like a, an iPad or something is able to see that. We can actually overlay the CAD data on top of that and do an exploded view of what's happening inside the pump. So he can understand how to take it apart and service the impeller and get him back on his way uh, and your, your process back on the line. And we're looking for other industrial scenarios and use cases so if anybody's interested in doing that, we'd love to kind of try these platforms and then bring them to those environments. All right, next slide. So another example is uh, in 2014, there was flooding in Calgary. They try to stay ahead of this stuff with the uh, spring snow melt from the mountains going down the Bow River in Calgary, but um, can't always stay always ahead of it. So we've got a quote from their uh, director of water services that they entirely depend on the Pi system in the month of June to prepare for flooding. We're having floods. We can look at the mountain river flows and know how much uh, time it takes for water to get there. In some cases, like in Vancouver, they actually can divert some flows and, and avoid flooding proactively. Um, so I'm going to play another video in a minute here, but these are some quotes that come out that have come out of this one two-minute video that I'm going to show for you. And um, I'll just go to the next slide here. Ah. Hey, oh, you know what? The video is on the link here again. <coughs> Last night when I was eating dinner, I was able to pull up process data on my iPhone app. This area is going to explore so much because now, think about this one. Somebody has a foresight app on their iCatch. Is that all the field sites? They're on the VPN and they can sweat on their iPads. Just trying to calibrate at the same website. After doing the calibration, you can immediately see the trend change. You can see it's kind of that, you know, where you can expand. Just like you would on your, your phone or your, your mobile device. In the public Wi-Fi system. That's really important because they've got a wide expanse of area that they have to move around. Foresight on their iPads got their attention and they kind of began to ask, can we get that? They can be a business of living Even the best doctors can have a very difficult time with technology. One of the advantages that I've been able to use with Foresight is its simplicity. Not getting too complicated. If the guy knows some tags and he can breathe, he can figure out foresight. Very user friendly. We can create their own flip life to develop all the graphics you need in half a day. My offers can easily create these screens. This one took me about an hour to set up these screens so it fits a purpose. This is a view of our master venue here. So we have just underneath a thousand displays built. The ability to email a link to a trend. Not just a screenshot, it's huge. Using high foresight, we were able to do a 40% sustained increase in the rate of penetration. Oh, about PL, we were about to show that it's done. <laughs> Downtown Gallery was inundated by flood water. The high servers, they were protected. But the problem was, people couldn't get the data because the data systems are down. So we're trying to figure out a solution for that. And the solution was mobile. Uh, this is actually a screen that I use every day. So you might be looking at it, and you're like, well, I don't understand any of that. Well, that's one of the advantages that we found with Corsair. This screen means something to me, whereas maybe the ship supervisors that are out in the field, maybe the control room operators out in the field, they have their own screens that they can build that mean something to them, and it helps them. So mobile, 
do like an issue with the money to invest in the different process work. Of course, like from the viewer, the value is. That's just about it. Um, yeah, we, we take data, we try to transform that data into knowledge so you can transform your, your operations to a uh, more digital atmosphere. Uh, these are the points. You can collect data from these AJAX tablets. You can detect and notify events. And you can make that data user configurable out in the field. Um, on demand so that people can make better decisions. Thank you very much. And if there's any questions, I'll be glad to take them now, or I'll be around till tomorrow around 11. <laughs>